from your request. We will compare today black oxide and pigment lamp black. Black oxide is a iron oxide with a very fine particle size. And here you see the swatch where it shows a fairly cool black. Here's we compare it to lamp black. You see it's four ounce in one jar where the black oxide 100 grams. Lamp black is a remarkably light pigment. Can you tell us from where that pigment comes? Well, it's it's actually lamp black, which is historically from a flame. So they burn, in this case today, they actually burn a natural gas and they make it from that. You can see how careful Tatiana was trying to open up that lid because she's afraid of that very fine powder blowing everywhere. It is true. It's one of our finest pigments. And when we make um, the batch of pigment color, or how is that? When we make a batch of the jars, we close everything around that area because the yeah, black no will... air blowing yes. because and of course we have we a barely can we have an breathe. exhaust yes. to uh, take remove any of the dust particles and even with all that precaution our employees their masks and of course they wear dust masks their masks will be black on the outside Here, I want you to notice, so I already put twice, and this is third time I put the oil to the pigment. You can see, still after... Still not enough oil, I think. Nope. And you can see it's dead matte because of that. Well, it's one of the reasons why it's dead matte. It absorbs a lot, a lot of oil. And in fact, the critical pigment volume concentration of lamp black is very high, probably one of the highest of all pigments. Let's compare it to black oxide. And you can see on same jar, we actually can fit 100 grams. And it's not even full jar, you can see that. Now look, for same amount of pigment, I want you to notice how much oil I will put. Quite a bit less. It is a low to moderate uh, oil absorption. It's almost uh, three times less. Yeah. yeah, not surprising with that. Yeah, because uh, again, because it's a uh, black oxide or oxide, well, most it's an all iron ox oxide. Yes, yeah. almost all oxides very heavy in density, and so that's why you see I put only one time amount of oil and it was already enough. Black iron oxides are from the mineral magnetite. Yes. And what's very interesting about this pigment, if you put a magnet near it, mm -hmm. the magnet will, all of the particles will adhere to the magnet. So no wonder it's called magnetite. So iron oxides, of course, make a wide range of colors, yellow, red, brown, black. And here's an example of look, that one. Look how glossy that is. And remember, Probably a little, it's very little small too much oil there in that yes, one. But even, still so when we amount. grind it, you can see we can disperse it very well. And you can see that this has, this has a good paste consistency. You can see also that in this particular image of, of the paint coming from the tube. Very heavy, very sticky, and very glossy. And you'll find the Munsell notations like you saw there. You can find them on our website too for all of our oil colors if you're interested in Munsell notations. Let's compare a lamp block right now and you still see how matte looking color it is. Typically it wouldn't be if it was ground on a mill like we would normally produce paint. 
It was good exercise on our classes when we were showing you uh, Prussian blue grinding. And uh, it doesn't matter how much you will grind by molar, it still will not be as glossy because it will not be dispersed pigment as well as when we grind on the nail. And that's why it will always look very flat or matte. And same, same exactly idea here. Lamp black has the smallest particles, but when you grind by hand, it's still not enough dispersing. Yeah, you can't really disperse it no. fine enough to break up yeah. all of the agglomerates. Lamp black is probably one of the smallest particle pigments available to artists. And it would be much stronger tinting if it was properly dispersed on a mill. Even with the mill, we can't get perfect dispersion. I do want to remind you, we don't make lamp black. And again, it's due to the, again, the idea then it does take a lot of oil. It dries much longer than any other color. Uh, not exactly as uh, titanium. Titanium dries much longer. But look at the difference between what we did with uh, lead white and now with titanium. Look how cool titanium makes lamp black blue almost immediately. Lamp black is typically a cool color and uh, although it's it looks like it's in a mass tone it isn't but uh, you can see readily when it tints it becomes quite cool and that's even more apparent with the titanium and the lamp black typically when you if you get it from any other manufacturer in terms of an oil paint it will usually contain dryers because it will take a long time to dry it is pure carbon black and carbon is an antioxidant for oil which is why it slows it down. And with titanium, it's even longer drying. It's worse because of that. Yes. It's because of the titanium is a coated pigment, and as a result, it's very unreactive with the oil. Now I wanted to see how the gradation with Velasquez, basically it's our chalk and um, bodied oil medium. And you see how glossier becoming with that medium. It's interesting to note how darker it becomes, but yes. that is only because visual. It's a it's a visual effect caused by the glossiness. Yes. So to increase gloss on any, or excuse me, to increase the depth or darkness or the value of any pigment, such as black, you increase its glossiness. Imagine, remember how much the uh, lamp black I took and now how much Velasquez medium I'm mixing and it's still dark. At because, this, yeah, at this point, I almost have just Velasquez medium and teeny tiny amount of the lamp black. Yeah, because Velasquez medium is not a white pigment. It looks a little bit white there, but it, it's basically transparent in, with any other color. Now let's talk about black oxide. You see how much darker it's look like because again, it is glossier. Mm -hmm. But it's a very dense pigment, high tint strength. And you can see that it holds its color very well against the lead white. And in this case, it stays fairly neutral. Lem black, it, oh, I'm sorry, black Oxide is the darkest block on line of the Rublev Rublev colors. colors. Yeah. And George noticed then how I was sloppy there, but it's not because of I uh, sloppy. Actually, I could not see very well because of the glossiness, and so I didn't see where the edge between. Under the camera light. Yes, yeah. yes, and now I see. <laughs> And you see how quite neutral here with lamp black, uh, with uh, lead white. Lead white. You got lamp black on your mind. Yes, <laughs> I do. <laughs> no. See how fast it cools down, though. 
with titanium. Which is, you know, this is really the remarkable thing about the blacks that a lot of people don't consider is how versatile they are because they can substitute in for, for a blue in many cases. This could be the blue of blue eyes. You wouldn't want to use a blue pigment uh, in blue eyes as an example because that would look startling. But this actually makes it look very natural, especially surrounded by a warm, warm skin tones. But blacks are so versatile. I don't know why they get such short shrift from so many artists thinking about chromatic black. Oh, talking about chromatic blacks, we are preparing another program for you where we will compare chromatic blocks from another company with our blocks and um, we will show you then it's much easier to work with one single pigment color than chromatic blocks because usually chromatic blocks have multiple pigments multiple pigments and that's and why usually some of the pigments may not be like that one thing yes and another thing uh, artists always not always. Artists often ask how come their blocks becoming shifting or pink or or yellow or green yeah. because they don't read the label. And if you will read the label, many of your chromatic blocks have different organic pigments. Look how the tint strength of that black. Yes. The Velasquez medium barely puts a dent into it. So the Velasquez medium could actually be used as a uh, as a very subtle white in some cases, but it would take a lot of the Velasquez medium. As you can see, she put two piles of that out there. Yes. Now we compare one block. You can see now back to back titanium with lead white. And you can see the same color completely different results. Here's Black Oxide. Thank you very much for being with us today. Bye-bye now.